So you just bought Clip Studio Paint because your favorite artist on YouTube or Twitter now uses it. What? Or they don't anymore and they're all telling you to go to Krita and Paint Tools side. But anyways, we're here to talk about Clip Studio Paint. So you download, install, register, and open the software and now wonder, how the heck do I start animating in this thing? And that's what I'm here to help you with. Before we start, recognize that Clip Studio Paint Pro is limited to one second of animation regardless of frame rate. Clip Studio Paint EX, though, has a full unlock timeline, and it's the version I'm going to be using today. But the setups are the same for both versions. There are two setups I use to animate. So the first way I like to get started is through the New File option. So I'm just going to go up to File, New, click on New, tab all the way over to Animation. There are presets for animation, so 1920 by 1080. And if you just use this, this will basically give you what you need. Now, I think the most important thing to realize for this is your width and height, the size of output frame, is going to be the same for the 2D camera. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is an important limitation to realize. Let's say you have a large background or a large scene that you want to pan around in and have the character doing a ton of different action animation. You're going to want to actually change the blank space. This is where you're going to want to invest in the size of your background. So if you already know what the size of your background is, I would make this adjustment now and I would always leave blank space in your animation for this reason. If you plan on compositing inside Clip Studio Paint, I do most of my compositing in other software so I usually don't have this as a limitation. We're going to change the frame rate to 24 since that's standard cinema. The playback time is the amount of frames you want on your timeline. So let's just do 48 for now. It's going to be two full seconds. You can name the timeline. Let's do the example. So I'm going to just reset this template to what the original was and I'm going to hit OK. So the really nice thing about using this method is Clip Studio Paint has already generated a timeline for you with an animation folder and a cell already in the folder. OK, so that's method number one. The second way to do it, and this is the way I typically work, is I go up to new, same way, but instead I go to an illustration. This is just my preferred method because I usually like to get in right away and start messing with stuff. So we'll do 1920 by 1080. And we can do 192 DPI since we know that's what standard animation preset is. Then we go here, we have nothing. But that's alright because we can just go to create new timeline here, this new timeline button. And this is going to give us a similar menu to what we saw on, in the new file menu. So here we can name it, we'll do example 2. The frame rate is going to be 24. The playback time is again the amount of frames that you want. So 48 for 2 seconds. Okay, well now what's going on? Now I can't draw, right? If you draw here, you're going to be drawing on a layer that clearly has the entire timeline engaged. So this is going to be static throughout the entire animation. Okay, so how do we change this? Well, we're going to want to create a new animation folder. So we can go here to the new animation folder button and inside we can just create a new animation cell by right clicking on the timeline. Okay, so now we have a new animation cell. I'm going to disable this previous layer. And here, circle square happens again because it's a super interesting shape. Let's go back to that first animation demo. Make sure you have your timeline open by going to Window and Timeline. So I keep mine down at the bottom. These are animation folders, and animation folders are created on the timeline. And so by default, Clip Studio Paint has already created one animation folder. We could call this, let's say we want to create a draft. Okay, and inside the draft we have a single layer for drawing. So I'm going to create something that's interesting, like a circle with a square in it. Super interesting. Okay. Now if we want to create another drawing, we're going to hover over the timeline and grab this little bar, or we can just click anywhere on any frame, and we're going to then right click, and I have a stylus, so I'm just using one of the buttons on it, and I'm going to hit new animation cell. That's going to create a new cell in my draft folder automatically. And what we want to do is we want to be able to see the previous drawing so we can make adjustments, right? So we're going to go over to this little button, and this says enable onion skin. Okay, and here are the settings for my onion skin, but if you want to change them, you're going to want to go to this little hamburger menu here to show animation cells and onion skin settings. So if I create one frame here and I say, now I want the circle square to move over this way, you can disable onion skin and you can get a clearer movement of what's going on. Okay, now if we want to add another cell in between, we can just use this little button here. Boom. Turn onion skin back on and create another circle square. Any subsequent animation folders will be on top, but you can just drag them below and you can see it's affected on the timeline. It's, it moves them around. You can also drag and drop them like that. You can append cells. So you can say, 
I don't want this cell here. I don't want this drawing here anymore. So you can just hit delete that and it's just going to take it right out and the drawing will be preserved. So even though I got rid of it on the timeline, the drawing itself is still preserved in the folder. So it didn't actually eliminate it. In here, you can specify cells. So if there's a certain cell you want, you can hit specify cell. And now it's going to pull up like, oh, I want one again. You can also right click to do specify cell, which is frankly a little bit faster. So you can create numerous timelines in case you want to manage things or create separate animations in the same background or for different characters or whatever. So to do that, you just hit new timeline. We'll create another one. We'll call this example two. Okay, so now under my timeline drop down, I now have two different timelines and you can see they're different. So one has an animated camera movement that we created and the second one does not. There is nothing on it, but all the same files are here. So this is if you want to create variations of the same thing. So that's helpful. So if you ever want to edit your timelines, use the hamburger menu to go to timeline, manage timeline. And here we can rename them, we can delete them, we can move them around and all that stuff. If you want to change the frame rate of your timeline, so let's go back and use this camera as an example. Right now it's running at 24 frames, which is cinema standard, and it's pretty smooth. You click it, boom, bada bing, bada boom. Pretty nice. But if we go to the hamburger menu for the timeline and go to timeline, change frame rate, we can do eight frames per second. So now it's gonna be a little bit slower. Chop, 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 chop. Something else significant that you can do is when you change the frame rate, you can change the total number of frames. So now we're on 24 frames again. And we go back and we wanna to go to eight frames. We can go to eight and we can hit change total number of frames and hit okay. And now the timeline has been proportionally reduced to that amount. So it's still gonna run the same at the same speed essentially, but it's just gonna be slower. So we created one full second of moving animation. Let's say for example, you accidentally create a timeline and you didn't give yourself enough frames. Well, what do you do here? If you just use the hamburger menu and go to timeline, insert frame, we can now add more frames to the entire timeline. This is gonna affect all your animation folders and it's gonna affect the entire thing by default. But if you hit selected layers only, then it's gonna only affect the current selected layers. I think if you wanna add frames, it's typically a good idea to add it to the entire timeline, but obviously that's on a case by case basis. So we're gonna add just like 48 frames, why not? And uh, we do that and it affects everything. So let's say that I have this red, green, blue animation, right? And I wanna add more frames just to the red. So I'm gonna to go to the hamburger menu and timeline and insert frame. And here we can hit selected layers only and hit preview. So now you can see it's going to add frames only to that. If you hit split clip, it's going to add 48 frames in front of the current animation. So you can just push the animation forward. But if I wanted to add just to the red, what's gonna happen is I can now extend out the duration of the timeline past where it currently goes but I'm gonna lose sight of everything else. So I'm gonna lose the blue, green, and even the paper. So the paper is also a layer that's technically affected. So if we wanted to change this manually, we'd have to click and drag it out. This is why I think it's better to just affect the entire timeline and then make adjustments as you need to. Now I've made other videos that give you tips and tricks on how to structure the folders in your timeline. I still think the best way to do it is to have one layer for a draft, another layer for your lines, and here in the lines folder, I would use vector layers to control my line art. So I would go over here and hit new vector layer and then append that on the timeline. If you do just a regular new animation cell, it will always default to a raster layer. But if you wanna be able to use vector layers, you're gonna to want to hit a vector layer and it will create a new vector layer for you, which you can put on the timeline. Vector layers have many properties that make them preferable for line work. So if I go to my vector layer here, and again, I'm in the camera folder, so I can't adjust anything. Clip to paint. Why do you do this to me? So let's see here. Okay, so here's an example of why vector layers are pretty awesome. Virtually nothing's actually changed, right? It looks like the same kind of line I would make on a raster layer. But now I have access to, if I press E, the vector eraser. And I just tick it here in the box. And now I can affect many things about this. So I can create all sorts of shapes. Um, so for example, your favorite cartoon character that maybe has spikes and maybe they're blue would go something like this. And now I can quickly get rid of those edges and create spikes very quickly. So when I draw the ears of the said hypothetical blue uh, anthropomorphic hedgehog, I can very quickly get very clean line work. So that's my preferred way to work. And I can even resize them. So after they're all done, I can use V, which is my object key, and I can select all the vector lines clicking and dragging, and then I can up their width. So that's another nice thing. You actually don't even need to select the lines. You can just press the control here and it'll change all of them on that layer. But if you want specific lines, like maybe I just want his eyes a little bit thinner, 
and I can do that manually. So then what I would do after this is create a new animation folder and I'd call this color and this is going to use a raster layer and then I'll set the lines to reference and then I'll turn off my background layer real quick. And now what I can do here is after I set the layer on the timeline, and let's just say I color it in, right? And so now my color and my lines are separate. Now, some people prefer to do it this way, and maybe this is the way you prefer to work. I like to keep my lines and my colors in separate animation folders. Some people prefer the way I'm about to show you, which is in a group folder. So you could use groups instead of individual animation folders for a single cell. So I'm gonna show you what this means. So I'm gonna move the cells to group one. Now in group one, we now have a single event on the timeline, but group one still needs its own animation folder. So now the single group is now on a single cell. You can have a single folder as a single cell full of drawing layers. So you could have a draft layer above this and you could have your sketch layer and you could, you could maintain all of it in the same folder. And so now I'll, I have all these different things that I can that I can turn off and turn on in this single folder. And when I duplicate it, and my hotkey is set to Alt D, so if I press Alt D, it's gonna duplicate it with the same settings I had before. And I just need to set it on the timeline again. I'm gonna tell you why I don't like working this way is one, sometimes in animation, I need to just export the lines. And to do that, I would have to manually go through and turn off the color layer on all of them. And I would prefer not to do that. I would rather just tick my line art animation folder off and export that way. Secondly, if you ever need to go back and adjust colors for anything, you're going to be, again, sifting through your folders, looking for where the colors are on the timeline. Whereas the way I like to set things up is I can turn the color quickly on and off and I can turn the lines quickly on and off. And I know where they are on the timeline by just reading it. But I do like to keep things organized by throwing things into folders as well. But I would do this as like maybe the entire character or maybe just his head. So I could do so uh, hedgehog, blue, royalty free, hedgehog. that's not true. Okay, so we'll just say Sonic head. And we could throw our lines and our color into here. Now I know where this grouping is and I can close it on my timeline in case I don't wanna see it. And then I can open it. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, slap a like. If you didn't, but know someone who might benefit, give it a share in your favorite art discord. If you want more tips on how to use the tools inside Clip Studio Paint, check out my tips for animation videos, which share an additional 10 tips on navigating this wacky world of animating in this program. There is a lot to learn, and this is not standard animation software. It's a little bit different. It takes some getting used to, but once you get going, it feels really good to animate in, and I love having access to all the raster tools that you do. If you haven't picked up Clip Studio Paint just yet, but are thinking about it, and you should, it's great software. Consider using my affiliate link. It gives me a small kickback on your purchase at no extra cost to you. Win-win. If you want to support me directly, you can join the Lizard Legion by becoming a channel member for exclusive channel perks like early access to videos, live stream emojis, live stream archives, and exclusive content. Until next time.